in this video I'll be going over different data types. I'll explain what each type is, what examples there are, and then kind of flesh out what the understanding of that variable is with those examples. The first one is categorical data. So categorical data has two different types of variables, nominal and ordinal. And the first one we're going to go over is nominal. So nominal doesn't have designations in order or higher or lower importance. It is simply what something is. Most commonly, we understand this in the form of demographics, like sex and religion, where you just have a sex, you just have a religion, there is no order to those designations. The next is ordinal. So ordinal is you have order, as implied by the name, it doesn't necessarily mean that that order can be measured numerically. It is order that comes with its contextual understanding. An example of this is grade levels in the United States, K through 12 where you have kindergarten going up to 12th grade, you know that in kindergarten, what's taught there is significantly simpler than what's taught in 12th grade. And so there's a context here of complexity of the topics that are being taught between K through 12. Now that doesn't mean the difference between seventh and eighth grade is the same as the difference between the third and fourth grade, but it does mean that what's in the next grade is more complex similar to the Likert scales. An example would be you're asked a survey and in that survey you are asked about satisfaction. The satisfaction question ranges from were you extremely dissatisfied, were you dissatisfied, no preference, satisfied or extremely satisfied. Or if it's about agreeableness or if it's about whether or not your likelihood of vote. Like, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can make these scales. In fact, you can make them with pictures as doctors do on a regular basis when you have to pick which circle or which face best describes how you're feeling. Those are all examples of Likert scales. Categorical variables are really good when you want to analyze proportions and frequencies. And so you would use tests that deal with those. Uh, so you'd have like logistic regression, chi-square. Those are the types of tests that you would want to use with categorical. The next classification is numerical, which is represented by numbers, where you're able to use calculations mean, median, and mode, use tests like T, Z test, and linear regression. The first one we're going to do is interval, and we're going to talk about grade point averages and temperature. Grade point average is a numeric representation of what you get for a grade. And it's converted usually to a four point scale. You know that 4.0 is perfect and zero is very much not. The important thing to understand here is that zero does not mean nothing. When you say you have a zero grade point average, you're saying that you have a grade point average that is zero. You are not lacking anything. And the same is true for temperature. If you have zero degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, in America we typically use Fahrenheit, the zero does not represent a lack of temperature. It is zero. It is a measurement on the scale and it represents something. And I bring that up because it's very important to understand the difference between interval and ratio and that's the key difference. Does zero represent something or does it not represent something? Unlike in ratio, which is the, the other numerical variable, where the number of children, if you say zero, you just don't have children. Uh, if you have years of work experience, that's zero. It means you don't have work experience. And so the main difference between interval and ratio really is that zero either means something or it doesn't mean something. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay nerdy, my friends.